I literally just updated you on Instagram that we're doing this mainly because Noah's sleeping but nevertheless hey guys what's happening it's Meshi with Align Plans thank you so much for joining me in today's video today as you can tell by the title we are talking about January favorites I wanted to really I was attempting to record this before the month was done but that's okay I wanted to take a moment to really just kind of reflect back and see in the planning world in the stationary world what were some of the things that completely rocked my world and kind of talk to you about it because i think that i don't know about you but if you are within the planning community you tend to accumulate quite a few things and sometimes it's really nice to kind of look back on what really worked well within that said month and really appreciate it for all for all that it has given you so if you wanted to kind of see and dive right in then let's just dive right in and if we've never met well hello how are you my name is Meshi and I'm the person behind Align Plans we chat a couple of times a week on this channel so consider subscribing if you have not yet already and we talk about anything and everything minimalist planning functional planning journaling fountain pen inks stationery all the things and the idea behind this channel is to really learn to use these tools in a really intentional way so that it's not just collecting dust and you're not just accumulating things but you find a way to actually utilize them so let's talk about what has made it onto the favorites so basically i broke everything down into a few categories so we have pens we have decor we have a planner system and we have inserts and ink so let's start first with pens because they are like the closest thing to me and don't worry i'm going to do my absolute best to remember to just link everything in the description if you're wondering about what i mentioned in this video and also i will show you guys close-ups of everything so first um when it comes to pens i have two different categories i have both a few fountain pen inks as well as some brush pens and also um I guess this would be like a ballpoint pen okay so let's talk about first the obviously like the, my most used pens so i have a couple of the kaweco sports here this one is in mint and then i have it in white as well so here they are in close-up and these are like the sports so these are like the mini versions and i also have the twisby so the twisby i believe this is the twisby eco this is also a mini version um, this one is in rose gold this is by far probably one of the most expensive pens that I have bought and honestly I love each of them equally but differently so I really love the Twisby for my common planner I really love the Kaweco sports for both journaling as well as um, to use it in my Hobonichi weeks so you kind of see me use this quite frequently um, if you haven't seen any of my plan with me videos for Hobonichi weeks I will just kind of put them in the cards so you can check that out but that's sort of how I use them I kind of like to switch out the inks every single month and usually I do my best to kind of record that so you guys can see what is the ink that I'm going to be using for that said month which allows me to not only rotate through some of my inks but then also it just kind of keeps my spreads a little bit more interesting I recently also started using some of my fountain pen inks in my Hobonichi Cousin. It's really lovely. Definitely not my first choice with some of the lighter inks, especially if I'm going to be journaling a lot. So for that, I will show you an alternative, but it, it definitely looks really pretty. Now, as far as brush pens, I do have two. One is the Pentel Sign Pen. It's, it's an oldie but a goodie. It's, it's really reliable. I really love the, the tip. It, depending on my mood, I either reach for this or I reach for the Tombow brush pen. Again, very, very reliable. I mean, I love everything about both of these brush pens and I find that the more I use it and the more I kind of slow down, the more I'm actually able to improve my calligraphy. I don't know if you feel that way, but sometimes if I'm just rushing, I end up just kind of making it look weird. I don't know. Is that just me? So I, I make it an effort to actually use them regularly so that like my hand lettering actually improves. And as far as pens that I use, um, I should actually grab one more. Um, I will show you a close up of it because I can't find it right now. But I have both the, I believe is the Pentel One. I've talked about this pen. It's like a three in one. 
I talked about this pen extensively. I end up using that in my vendor spec, like in my minimalist planner, my rings, and my Sarasa. I have this in brown, but I actually have I have the black one as well. This is in a 0.5. Both of these guys are in a 0.5 thickness. Again, I'm pretty sure you have seen this. If you haven't, pick up like a whole bunch of these because they are fantastic. As long as I find that as long as I wait long enough for the ink to dry, I'm pretty much good in any of my planners. It doesn't matter if I'm using my rings or if I'm using my journal or if I'm using my any of my Hobonichis on Tomo River paper. It looks really pretty. I do find that I write differently with them than I do with my fountain pen inks, which is kind of, I don't know if you do this, but my writing style kind of changes a little bit whenever I'm using the Sarasa pens. Nevertheless, um, I, I recently started using it and we fell back in love. Now let's move on to decor. And with decor, I kind of wanted to just keep it very simple because I tend to really gravitate towards like journaling supplies when it comes to decor, decor. But on a very minimalist side of things, I've been absolutely loving these dots. There's like a thousand of them. There's like a nice little variety of like these transparent dots. I have quite a few. If you haven't picked up these, like Amazon has these and it's so inexpensive. I think I, pay, I spent maybe like 10 or $12 on like, I think eight rolls and you get, again, you get quite a bit. So I'm using them for both journaling. I'm using them for note taking, like the sky is literally the limit. So I, I don't have that fear that I'm going to be running out of dots. I, I don't tend to use them as often in my minimalist planner, just because I do prefer some of the, um, like the cloth and paper dots or or some of the papery planning like just dots but in everything else in Tomo River paper because it's a little bit translucent or a little bit transparent it kind of just draws your eye to certain areas especially on a weekly spread again I will just show you a close-up of what I'm actually talking about so that it makes sense I've been loving those and as far as decoration or like washi tapes are concerned I've been really gravitating towards these guys. So these are, mo most of these that I'm showing you are from uh, Cute Things from Japan. And I mean, if you look at the washi tape, you'll understand why I love it. It's kind of transparent, but yet it still adds a bit of wash of color. So I find that with, with washi tapes and specifically, I really love like really faint looking washi tapes that just kind of add a little splash of decor, but it's not too, too obnoxious. This is another one very cute. If I'm doing like anything with family or family related events and things like that, I really love using this. For some reason, we're not focusing. Here we go. Um, and I have this one, I believe this is the same it's from the same designer. You can kind of tell, like it, one of them is more blue, the other one is a little bit more gray toned. And then again, some more like neutral toned washies that just kind of looks like, it almost looks like a, like a ticket of some sort. Love stuff like this. Like I would love to actually add more to my collection from from these designers i'm i'm starting to get really like selective about which um which artist i want to um support i'm not so i don't know like i'm i'm being a lot more particular about the type of like decor pieces i'm picking up and so i i do see that i'm creating a pattern of which designer, which artist I like to support and where I, I prefer to use like the decoration from. And then that creates like a nice cohesive spread that just really matches my style. That's one thing that I can really recommend is if you're finding that you're gravitating towards the same type of colors or same type of look, then find out the artist of that, of that sticker sheet or of that whatever and and then support that because then that way your style will stay relatively consistent now let's talk about 
I'm going to leave planner system last, but I wanted to talk about ink next. So for the month of January, so this is just for the month of January, and I would love to include some of the newer ones, but honestly, I just bought them like a week ago, so I'm not going to include them for now. What I was using quite heavily was actually the ink. So this one is the ink from, from Guitar Fountain Pen Ink. <clears throat> This is the color, this is their box. This is in the color Opera Rose. Here is a swatch, the close-up swatch. And honestly, oh, first of all, bottle is stunning. I don't know why I'm keeping the box. For some reason, it's giving me a little bit of like a sense of comfort. But um, the guitar, I believe it's Guitar Gold Star, but no, it's Guitar Fountain Pen Ink. I really love their stuff. I bought more from the collection which i will show you in the next video where we're going to be actually inking all my pens and then the other two colors that i picked up this is from troublemaker one is petrichor the other one is kelp tea again if you've been online anywhere um and you've looked at fountain pen inks you know the troublemaker is just like ferris wheel press they are very reliable inks um, I picked up colors that are very recognizable, very easy to read, so I really do appreciate that. And honestly, like I just, again, I have to pick up more from, from the brand. And I picked up two new, actually three new colors. So again, that's going to be coming up in my upcoming video when we're going to be inking most of my pens because I like to kind of switch out things for, for the whole month and actually utilize it for the whole month. So let's kind of see how I do. So that's it on inks. Now let's talk about inserts. So for inserts, I'm going to come to my little vendor spec. And the thing that I've been using the most actually is two inserts. Okay, I guess three. So one of them is a daily insert. Then this is from May Paper Co. Again, I will show you a close up. But the reason why I love this is because it not only has a section for breaking down priorities, it has an area for a schedule. So sometimes when I have a really busy day and I'm working from home and I really want to keep track of my time, I do prefer time blocking far more than I prefer like this long to-do list. So if I have a really busy day, as much as I like having space for a to-do list, but I do find that if that's all I have, I have a really hard time kind of subsegmenting my time and it just feels like I need to finish everything all at once so that kind of tends to overwhelm me so here i do have like half a page that is really dedicated to a schedule and then on the bottom it leaves some space for notes which i have been using for just like odd information that really doesn't make it onto the to-do list and it really doesn't make it onto the schedule and it doesn't make it onto the priorities so for that reason i've really been loving it i also like the fact that i've been using my little dot so here's a close-up Hopefully it zooms in for you. So you can kind of see like I'm using my little um, dot markers. I should have actually added them as well. So these are it, the, the clean color dot markers. If you haven't picked any of these up, they're like such a lifesaver if you don't feel like using um, the dot stickers. And then the other thing that I've been really enjoying is actually my weekly insert from Noted. Again, I will show you a close-up of everything. The reason why I love this is because it has a section for to buy or to, to pay. So I've been keeping track of my expenses there a little bit. So as certain days come up, I can kind of add a check mark if I paid that back. Um, it also has a note section, a priority section. I've been using some of my colored pens for color coordinating, so keep it very clean and minimal. And then I also love that the other page has like a full quarter of a page just dedicated for to-do lists. So again, it allows me to kind of write as much as I want to without feeling restricted by space. So for that reason, I've been really loving it. And honestly, I've just been too lazy to print out my um, finance insert. So the other thing that I've been using quite heavily for the month of January was actually these little note pages. So it's literally just a, a grid. So you can add like a little title at the top 
and then you just have a grid page. So this would be basically like my research information on on birthday and Valentine's Day, like anything getaway. I also have one on just on finances and expenses that I kind of have like an ongoing um, expense report. And I have another one on, again, just planning out trips. So again, like you don't, have, you don't need me to explain to you why having just a grid page is so useful because you have like a thousand different ways of using it. So that's what I've been really loving in my vendor spec and in my minimalist planner. Now let's talk about ah let's talk about planner systems. I mean I briefly updated you guys quickly on what's happening with my planner system. I am definitely still in my common planner. It is definitely working for me. I'm getting used to some of the weekly layouts. I'm planning them with you and I'm kind of finding my groove as I go. However, um I don't want to give you like a full planner update because there's really not much to update you on. I'm using all of my tools every single day. It's just I'm using each of them a little bit differently. I'm finding that for memory keeping, I moved back into the Hobonichi Cousin. If you guys ever wanted to see like a plan with me or like a journal with me video on that, please comment and let me know because I would love to film that for you. But as far as like day to day, really just finding my own groove of how I'm using the common planner, the common planner has been really working for me. Like to a point where like I'm considering taking this with me so that it's with me all the time. I don't know if I will go that far, but um, but this has, this has been by far my favorite to use out of everything. And I kind of changed the Hobonichi weeks just slightly of how I'm currently utilizing it because I started adding a bit more of the social media aspect in there. And all of that has been working out great. So those are like my top two that have really kind of rocked my world for the month of January. I don't necessarily think that each month your preferences will change with your planner system, but I do believe that there's something to be said about what you learn each month about how you interact with the systems that you set up for yourself. Because sometimes you might have, like I've seen videos where people talk about like what to do if you hate your system. And I don't have that problem. I like all of the systems that I set up for myself. However, I definitely learn something new about myself as I start using it because I use my common planner so differently than the way that I use the Hobonichi Cousin. Granted, they are filling up two different functions altogether, but pay attention to how you interact with your planner. How does it make you feel when you start using it? It's such an easy mindfulness practice to kind of add into your routine because you're already in a calm state whenever most most of us are. It's, it's so therapeutic and becoming aware of the therapeutic effects that these journaling and planning tools can give us, it can kind of enhance the experience in my opinion. And that kind of wraps it up. I mean, I could add some of the other like little stickies and, and whatnot into like decor. I don't want to overwhelm you with like a thousand different things but this is all I want to share with you. Let me know in the comment section below what was your absolute favorite thing to use for the month of January. Now that we wrapped up January, I would love to hear from you. Let me know. And um, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can support the channel by subscribing. You, if you wanted to support me even more personally, you can also hunt me down on Patreon. I have the link down in the description. If you find that it resonates, please come and support me. I would love to have you in the community. But in the meanwhile, just keep planning, keep journaling, keep using these beautiful tools, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video.